Welcome into the Tour Coach, everybody. I'm your host, Tony Ruggiero, as I am every week in, week out here on the Tour Coach. If you're listening here for the first time, these are stories, interviews, conversations, roundtable discussions with the coaches, the players, the caddies, the mental experts, the fitness experts, all the people that I run into in my travels around the world of golf. And my mission is to help develop as many players from junior golf to college golf to the PGA or the Live Tour and to help as many golfers lower their handicaps as possible. And these are the stories and the conversations from my travels, from whether it's my home studio in Mobile, Alabama, or my home base, where I'm very proud to be part of the staff down at Old Palm Golf Club with Mark Hackett and Dan Terleski and the staff, or up at Bluebell in Philadelphia. So grab a bag of popcorn, sit back. If you got some questions, always feel free to let us know. The Tour Coach Podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts whether it's Spotify, Google Play, Apple, anywhere there's podcasts, you could find the Tour Coach. If you like this, we've got a bunch of episodes out there and a bunch of conversations. Some of them are serious. Some of them we have a pretty dang good bit of fun. Actually, most of them we have a pretty dang good bit of fun. And if you like what you hear, you can always find videos and instruction content that goes up daily on our YouTube, Do Sweeper TV on YouTube. Go check it out. We've got our pro work episodes, which are behind the scenes, inside the ropes, work with players of all abilities from the tour all the way down to recreational weekend warriors. I think you'll like the inside the ropes, behind the scenes look. And we also have our daily shorts out there that are uh, drills and swings and thoughts to help you play your best golf. So check out Do Sweeper TV on YouTube. Please like, subscribe, and share the Tour Coach if you like it. And as always, special thanks to our sponsors, Shrixon Cleveland Golf, Buick GMC, especially Mitch McConnell, Bushnell Golf, Vineyard Vines, and we couldn't forget Taylor Martino and Rowan and Stokely's Midtown Garden Center. They're all the best. They keep the Tour Coach and the Dew Sweepers rolling. So enjoy this episode, and don't forget to share and like and let us know who else you'd like to have here on the Tour Coach. Joining me here on the Tour Coach, Major League Baseball great, Kenny Lofton, center fielder. Uh, Kenny, thanks for taking the time to join me. And kind of a cool story, I met you on a shuttle bus to a live event in Las Vegas, and uh, yeah. we just got talking about golf and live golf and players and all that, and uh, swapped some you swapped some swing videos, and you came down to spend a little time down at Old Palm with us a few weeks ago. And that yep. was one of the most fun couple hour sessions I've had in a hitting bay in a long time, not just watching you hit golf balls, but talking baseball. So thanks for taking the time to join us and thanks for coming down to Old Palm a little bit. Yeah, it was nice. It was good. Uh, it was a good course down there. Yeah, it was fun. You got rained out a little bit but when you tried yeah, to play. Did. When it when that rain stuff comes, it comes up quick down there in the summer. Yeah, yeah it did. Uh, talk. I wanted to talk a little bit about – I thought when we were in the hitting bay down there at Old Palm and we, you know, we were working on your pivot, helping you learn to load and then really kind of helping you learn to unwind correctly from where you, you got to. And then somewhere in the, somewhere in there, you know, we got talking about hitting baseball and you, you were telling some stories about like watching some guys today and the difference between how they're taught to hit today versus how you learn to hit. And I thought that was really fascinating because to me, like when I go through, you know, and and I love like traveling, you sit and watch baseball, you know, at night, right. And stuff like that. And I always watch them hitters. And to me, there's a lot of similarities between the way you hit a baseball and the way you hit a golf ball. And I'd love to just kind of pick your brain and hear some of those stories again. Cause I thought they were, they were just really interesting for people that love golf. Well, you know, the thing about, you know, hitting the baseball today people is looking at launch angle Mm -hmm. and that's something that when I played and guys before me, they didn't look at launch angle. Are you going to tell one of the best hitters in the game that I played at the time was Tony Gwynn Yeah, to (laughs) to have a launch angle. And I think the game when I played it was about making contact, putting the ball in play. It's the opposite game. Now The, uh, the game now is, swing as hard as you can and launch angle up in the air and see if you can home run. If you hit, if you strike out, they didn't care. You know, before when I played, when you, when you struck out a hundred times, that was kind of bad for you. 
Now they're striking out 200 times and they're saying it's okay. <laughs> but the game going now, you can strike out 200 times and make 25 million a year. When I played, you struck out 100 times, you was barely making 5 million. They, they would basically get you out the game very quickly. And just understanding the golf ball, the baseball, they're, they're the same. You're hitting the ball with a stick. But I think the transition is with baseball, since the bat is so small, there's not a whole lot of lag behind the bat compared to the golf club. Okay. The lag behind it, it takes you because once baseball players – starts their hips they're gone it's 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 kind of once your hips go your hands are coming along with your hips and in golf it's almost like it seems like it's the same but it's actually the hips have to actually rotate almost i'll say east and west baseball your hips got to go almost north and south then your back comes through you know okay. so if people think, you know, in golf, what I've learned, you know, working with you is that my rotating my hips, my my hands and clubs are still behind. And right. then it just whips. In mm-hmm. baseball, there's really not really a whip. Okay. And in baseball, if you have so much a a a whip or drag in baseball, they're saying you're you're late. Okay. And if you're late in baseball, you're going to almost miss the pitch. So now is that the, like, and I think golf, those kind of under um, gone some of the changes, like you talked about with baseball, where, you know, with the, with like the track mans and the quads and all the stuff we have, you know, they started realizing optimizing launch angle and spin would help you hit it further. And like you watch a lot of these young kids, like I had a kid in from Clemson this week. I mean, I mean, that guy kid hits it, you know, carrying it 350. You know, they know how to maximize it, right? But, like, and and I think we've started teaching a little bit golfer, young golfers, to create speed, hit it far. Then we'll figure out how to help you learn to keep it in play and to play golf, which is, to me, kind of similar to what you're saying. You know, know, baseball's changed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. But I just don't understand. You know, they want to hit it far, yes. Mm-hmm. Baseball, you want to hit it far. What they're trying to do is hit it far because they want the guys to hit it out the ballpark. Right. Um, but they don't care about, you know, I think last year, I think they had nine players hit over 300. And I think they bat on that place, same path or lower for this year. Again, if I would have played in the game today, they wouldn't – look at what I do is nothing because I'm not hitting home runs. They only care about home runs in this game today. Don't you think that's, I mean, as a fan, I mean, I don't, I think, I don't think it's as exciting. You get a lot of strikeouts. You do get the home runs, but like the baseball I grew up with where a guy would get on base and you try to get him to second Mm -hmm. so that a guy could hit one to the opposite field to get him in or whatever. You know, to me, that's, entertaining and fun watching but it's certainly not the same again that's when they uh i felt like once they got the um the analytic people in from you know princeton harvard or whatever those guys uh, the ivy yeah. league data that comes into the game it feels like they created something new to the game and it took the same feel away from baseball so baseball is not the same feel you get because of the analytics. And it's not like the, the, the tough part I feel about what the analytics, what the analytics doesn't record is the human element. Mm-hmm. The human element to the game of baseball, they're not taking in that consideration because a guy can – own me or a guy can you know probably be against me he can probably i'm one for just say i'm one for 20 but all of a sudden when i come and face him this time he don't have the same stuff because maybe he had a um a sore finger or a hangnail he had trying to blister or whatever but now they're saying you know that's the part that the analytics can't 
incorporate in there because just say the guy has a, a blister, he can't snap that curveball as much as he want to. So now mm -hmm. that curveball is more a little flat than normal, but all of a sudden the 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 pitcher won't tell the the hitter, oh yeah, I have a I have a blister on my finger, so I can't snap my my curveball. But the analytics will say, oh Kenny, you're one for twenty, you can't face him today. But knowing there's a blister on his finger, and yeah, Kenny, you you didn't hit his curveball or whatever because of he had this snap curveball, but today. He's not throwing that snap curveball because he's throwing something else because that blister is on his finger. Little right. stuff like that. It can't, or the guy's not feeling that good, or something is going on. Analytics can incorporate that. And then you got these guys with this list of paper on their wrist and hands. And I'm like, the human element is 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 pitch to pitch. They they it's almost like they have a a list of things, what they supposed to do because of the hitter. But I look at it as if a pitcher, I'll just say with the pitchers, almost like the, the brave staff back in the day, Okay, they threw the ball basically where they were supposed to throw hitters. Nowadays don't do that anymore. So you can say, Oh yeah, you supposed to play this guy going to left field or going to right field because the pitchers knew where to throw. Now the pitchers throw so hard, they don't even know where they're throwing, and they don't know how to pinpoint their strikes of where they're throwing and hitting the hitting the hitting the zone. So when you have a guy look at his wrist and say, "Oh yeah, I was supposed to play," no, if the pitcher is not playing pitching his game, you can't play analytics the, the right way because the pitcher is not doing it the right way. Well, there's a lot, and, and I think the same with golf. I think all those numbers are great. Um, and I think I had a conversation with a tour player this morning about wanting to get some more data and all that. And I think all that stuff's good, but there's a huge difference between what happens on a range in a building versus nine holes to play and you're two back or three back or, or you're teeing off on the first hole in a major. I mean, I think that – I mean, analytics are great and data is good, but like, I don't think that somebody asked me today, you think AI is going to take the place of teaching golf. And I just don't see, I mean, I think first maybe some beginner stuff, but there's still a huge human element in understanding your player mm -hmm. and his tendencies. Also like when's the right time to try to tell him to improve at something yeah. or to say something. I'm sure you had coaches in your career with all the great stuff you did. Like, I mean, to me, great coaches find the right time and the right ways to communicate things and get you to do things. It's not just talking it into a phone and they tell you what the hell to do. Well, the thing about I'm, I'm gonna always use the human element as the as the corporate to all this because you can use I'll just use Bryson as a perfect example. Bryson does all this analytics that okay. So the good thing between the difference between golf and baseball. Golf, the ball doesn't move. It's <laughs> almost like it's almost like well, you can say baseball and golf. If you put a ball on a tee for me in baseball, I will put it wherever I want to put it. Okay. Okay. I can do it. But when the ball is moving, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. So because you been in golf, there's no pitcher throwing the ball at you with some type of spin rotation that when he threw this one, it snapped a little bit less than the other one. Think about it. And so if I, if a pitcher throws a curveball and it don't, he didn't get his bottom finger or whatever the right way, that ball is not going to spin the way it's supposed to. So that's the human factor. But this analytics is saying that if he throws a good one, it's going to spin this way. Okay. But what if he doesn't? What if the ball is a little slippery? And that's why the guy's always trying to cheat and try to put stick them or whatever <laughs> on the ball. Try to put something on the ball so he can have that continuous motion of knowing how to throw the ball to make it turn. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, the human factor that's different from baseball to golf. The different thing in golf is the ball's on the ground. It's not moving right. But it could be in a divot. 
It could be in certain type of grass, bent grass compared to Kakuya and all that kind of grass will affect the situation. So there are ways or things in golf that affects the situation. Well, you know, wind is in both, but not as much in baseball as it is in golf. But again, no matter what, you can tell Bryson or Tiger or whoever, you can get up there and like Tiger always trying to try to learn how to fire my hips. What if he didn't fire his hips at that time the right way? The ball's not going to go with the way it's supposed to go. Again, human element. So there's a lot of human elements to both parts of it, and there's a lot of movement. So the, the baseball, the pitcher's movement, the golf is the elements that your ball is sitting on, grass, tee, high, fluff, flyer, light, all that comes into play. If you tell a guy on, um, if just say, golf will be different if you put, you if every ball you hit, after you hit, you get to put it on the tee. Then golf will be so much easier. A guy striking the ball better than they did with different elements. That's the difference that people need to understand on both sports. Now talk about the similarities. Like you, you mentioned, you mentioned if a ball was on a baseball was on a tee, and when you were in the hitting bay in Old Palm, you were talking about if the balls coming in, and you, you know, you could place it. If it's coming down, you can place it. How does that transition at all? How do you transition that ability? Because you're great, one of the great hitters. How do you transition that to when you're, you know, when you've got 140 yards in and there's water to the left, you're a left-handed player, right? You know, and it's a little safe. I mean, how do you transition that ability that you have from baseball to golf if you can do it at all? Well, it's not that because every everybody thinks it's easy. It's not that easy learning, understanding golf and the transition. But the good thing that baseball players have than, than most, you know, normal people playing golf is the hand-eye coordination. We knew how mm -hmm. to adapt to where if we're swinging and our body is not in the right position, we still have a, a, a an ability to adjust the hands to make contact, to, it's a feel of adjusting your hands compared to your body because your body can move a certain way, but if the just say the ball has off speed, you think it's coming in faster, and your body jumps out. Long right. as you, as long as you're able to keep your hands back, you're able to try to manipulate your hands to make contact to the ball. So that's what a lot of baseball players can do in golf is that even though sometimes their hip didn't fire or or they, they didn't turn their hips in time, they still understand that my hands is my last resort to make contact to the ball. And we know how to kind of manipulate our hands to make contact to the ball. It might not be perfect, but it will be in the area that what you need to do to at least not be in the water, like you said. Right. I knew how to make my adjustment to keep it away from the water. And and I think as golf has progressed, and like you've mentioned, Tiger, like teaching golf, developing young people, we're getting great athletes now that come and want to play golf as their sport. When I was coming up, maybe not not so much. Everybody played baseball or football. And I think that's also one of the advantages of some of these kids that were good at a bunch of sports, really good athletes. Like you take a guy like Kepka. I mean, he's a great athlete. He could have played some other sports or, or whatever, like th that they've got that ability. You just talked about, not only can they build, we can build strength and speed and all that, but then you add that with the fact that they've got great hands and great hand eye and ability. Shit. It makes them even better. Right. I mean, when you've got a great athlete learning the proper mechanics and the stuff. To well, play golf. Uh, athletes, Again, make see great athletes know how to make adjustments, and I think mm -hmm. that's the major thing in sports is you make you make an adjustment. The guy I feel like the guy who don't succeed in sports doesn't know how to make an adjustment because just say other than golf and you know there's a there's a defense and there's an offense. The defense is trying to stop you from doing what you're doing. 
and the offense is trying to go around what the defense is doing. So you have to make that adjustment and you have to make it at times on the fly. And if you know how to make that on the fly, that makes an athlete become a, a, a greater athlete than the norm because of the adjustments. Right. And that you can see a young hitter, real great or whatever, and blah, blah, blah. He's so good. Then all of a sudden they start to figure him out. Then so they started making adjustments to them. And now he has to make adjustment himself. And if he can't, he's going to struggle. So Isn't that what happens to young pitchers, like when they go through the lineup once and nobody's kind of seen them and, you know, they have success. And then somebody like you comes along, you've seen them once or twice. It's got to be way easier if they don't learn to adapt. Well, yeah, if you don't learn how to adapt. But again, every hitter, just because you saw him in the second time in the lineup, you don't know how to make that adjustment. Everybody's different. And okay. you, you got to try to counter what they're trying to do. Because you're right, you've seen him around the thing. Either he's going to do the same thing, in which most smart pitchers would keep doing it until you make an adjustment. If you don't make that adjustment, you're going to keep doing what he's doing. So once you make an adjustment to him, or, yeah, once you make an adjustment to him, just say a pitcher struck me out or whatever. So I'm going to try to figure out, is he going to make an adjustment or are you going to do the same thing? So it's a more of a cat and mouse trying to figure that out. But I say, but pitcher, you get me out, you better do the same thing. But mm -hmm. if I'm a great hitter, he's going to have to make an adjustment because he got to say, you know what? I got him out. He's going to probably do something different. So like I say, it's more that cat and mouse back and forth trying to figure out how can I get this guy out now? So, and great hitters know how to make that adjustment. And sometimes either a hitter or a pitcher, somebody is just better. I mean, you got to give, you got to tip your hat to some guys sometimes and say, Hey, yeah, sometimes my number. keep it moving. Yeah. yeah. That's just the game. Last question. We, when we were working, one of the things we kind of helped you understand, I felt like was, your idea was like trying to load or move the pressure going back. You knew it needed to get back into your trail leg, your left leg, but you did it more by sliding or lateral movement. And your left hip kind of went up. We helped you learn. I felt like a lot of it, we put you on some balance discs and some stuff, learn to move the pressure back to your trail side with rotation and turning and loading. And, and uh, I want you to comment on that for a second, but, how is that different or the same than what you would do if you were waiting on a baseball to come in as far as the loading, the trail leg? See, the difference is for me, I, I didn't look at it as the same, but actually you load pretty much the same way. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that. I didn't understand that because, again, the ball is not moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so the golf ball is not moving. So I was trying to figure out how do I load when it ain't moving compared to baseball. That's I know I got to load because it's coming and it's actually, it's actually the same. But I think for me learning with, with you guys over there is that it was always my transition from my back swing to my forward swing. Right. I was trying to understand in baseball, my backswing goes back and you go forward. In golf, your backswing, you go back, you start forward, but then you turn. Mm -hmm. So it's like I kept going forward without turning, and which you've taught me to, when I go forward, I turn, I, I, I start almost a forward motion and then my hip fires east and west mm -hmm. and I was always going north and south without really turning so I kind of went north and south and had a slight east and west late kind of real late it was late so I had a late east and west but then once I learned to turn east and west early, I was able to feel the drag of the club. And then only thing was that from that point, once you got in your, once you got in what they call the slot, my hips, my hips 
got me out of that slot. Mm -hmm. Before I was getting my hands to get out of the slot. Mm -hmm. Now my hips is helping me get out of the slot. That makes sense. Oh, well, totally. That's you, but but for me, I always thought my hands, and when I did, my hands kept pulling across my body because of that reason. Mm -hmm. So now I'm learning for my hands, my hips to take over. So my hips made my hands released before I was letting my hands make my hips released. So it was the complete opposite. Yeah. And I made it work because again, my hand high coordination. Right. And then once I felt like I was staying back and then pivoting, I didn't, I took less, less effort to swing the club. And before I was tired after hitting balls all the time. <laughs> now I'm not as tired because my hips, the strongest part of my body is my lower half. And that was doing all the work. So. That was an awesome summation of the lesson there. You did great. It was hot, but yeah. No, Kenny, that was, that was awesome. And thanks for taking the time, but I, you know, teaching a lot. It, it was so fun hanging out with you for those couple hours of just talking baseball. Hopefully we'll get to do it again. If I get out to California, maybe we can play some golf. Okay. It'd be fun. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for sitting in right. and uh, send some videos so we can keep you headed in the right direction. All right, I will. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kenny. All right. Bye.